All right, let's do this. Do you like getting more things for doing less work? Because I do. I love that. That's a great feeling because it means I don't have to spend another hour grinding on the same dang enemy just to get a potential drop or that I have to get three of them to craft them into another one and then to get three of those and to craft them into another one. Nobody likes that. Okay. Nobody. So I wanted to make a guide about how to make your life easier if you have these characters, which you should because they're currently in the banner for Klee. And if you don't have them, then I don't know what to tell you probably going to be other characters down the road that come out that have similar traits. So I think that this guide is valid for all of you, any of you who want to save time, save resources and save Mora and time. Gosh, I want to give you more, more time back. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to talk about what to do with your extra weapons, your artifacts, your crafting and your cooking. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Genshin Impact gives us a lot of simple resources in the game that I have been underutilizing and today it slapped me in the face when my mouse sounded like the Wheel of Fortune trying to scroll down to the bottom of my artifacts and weapons list. So on another episode of Hoarders Genshin Impact Edition, we're going to talk about effectively and efficiently cleaning up your shit. Did you know that as your adventure rank unlocks higher world levels, your number of drops and rarity also increase? If you're wasting all of your time in lower adventure rank playing Animal Crossing and you're having a great old time shaking trees, by all means, you do you. But if you want a more efficient grind, focus your attention on your adventure rank first, and you may find that the resources you were trying to craft will now drop from that elite. Did you also know that you can sell your equipment with really destructive verbiage? Literally, it says destroy, but you do get something out of it. For five stars, you're gonna keep one, then use your dupes on it, and then you're gonna repeat the process with the second one, and so on and so forth. With four stars, you're gonna keep one, dupe, and repeat, same thing. Three stars, you're gonna keep one, dupe it, and then you're gonna use the remaining to enhance. Two stars and below, you're gonna enhance them into other gear. Why enhance and not sell? Selling gives no Mora, and it ends up being more efficient to enhance. You can test this for yourself by placing an item into the enhancement slot and seeing the amount of Mora value it is costing you First, if you sell it, how many Sorcerer's Stones it's giving you. You then put as many stones as it would take to meet the same enhancement price as the item itself, and you'll quickly recognize that the stones you get for destroying an item is worth around 80% of the value. No, I did not calculate the actual value, and yes, it did make a subtle Harry Potter reference. Now let's talk about your artifacts real quick. Adventure rank increases, dungeon difficulties unlock, but you don't have to worry because the power of the elements will help support you. I was crushing Pyro 80s with a 50 Chang Yun and a 70 support squad on non-efficient artifact builds. It's not a big deal. Now, going through and looking at what artifacts to keep, enhance, or sell, all five star I recommend keeping for right now, four star, keep or enhance, depending on whether you're in mid or late game status, and then for three star, you're either going to use these to enhance your four and five star items, or you're going to go ahead and sell them, depending on whether you're in mid or late game status. Eventually, it will be to sell all of your artifact drops till they're four or five star, then two star, you're going to obviously sell, and one star, obviously sell. You may wonder why sell these. Well, it's because of money. It's the thing that makes Mondstadt go round, not the money that makes this company a multi-million dollar monopoly in the gacha market. I'm referring to the precious digital currency known as Mora, the thing you once had one million of in the beginning, but then you go searching through the wilderness for Mr. Moneybags, the magical bunny, just to track him down and milk him for the 500 Mora he's worth. It becomes essential in late game, that's all I'm saying. Did you know that sucrose is a type of sugar? Sucrose also gives you a 10% chance to retrieve double your crafting results on certain items, and she is obtainable from current banner as a possible one of three characters every 10 summons. Why is this even important though? These crafting items will stand in your way later in the game between ascensions 4 through 6. The drop rate on purple isn't the best, if I can help you get 3 extra purples on these, then this part did its job. I happened to dabble in my crafty side recently and initially thought I could cheat the system of crafting by doing one item at a time. And after 30 attempts on a single item, I rage summoned the remaining 30 and I ended up getting 5 back and I was like, holy mackerel, that's like 16%. I continued to do this and after a while I noticed that doing multiple rolls at a time with a minimum of around 25 to 30 granted me the illusion of receiving better returns on that 10% bonus. So I wanted to share that experience with you. I want to be clear though that this will not grant you higher luck, but it seems like the hundreds of crafting I did with individual items never granted me the amount of returns compared to the multiple crafts that I did. So I'm sticking to it and so should you. But if anyone has any evidence that specifies the difference between these two things, statistically with analysis, 
go ahead and comment below. Also, another side note that I realized today, if you are purchasing crafting materials with your Masterless Stardust, I would recommend going with the green drops first before the blue, and this is why. By purchasing three items for 15 Masterless Stardust for the same price as one blue item, you could actually potentially get more out of it. And so, I recommend going with that at least first and then checking your luck to see because you might be able to get the materials you need for the characters you're trying to build. Then if you still need a few left, then no harm no foul, you still have those blue ones that you can go ahead and pick up. And cooking. Why is cooking important? Some people don't run healers. Others don't realize how important healing is going to become when they create an instant way of eating without the menu, which is something that has been leaked to be a rumor for a future patch. So investing now means you won't have to invest as much later. Barbara is a free hydro healer that also has a 12% chance to increase cooking results, similar to sucrose but with food. Less resources, more dishes, and less Paimon complains about being hungry. Similar to the experience with crafting, I noticed doing dishes in larger quantities gave me better results. However, with cooking, I will note that it doesn't look the same. I did 30 dishes and it shows the result as 33, which means I got 3 additional, but it doesn't show up as an additional side plate item, it shows it all in one. So that did throw me off a little bit up front, but I want to mention it because I didn't initially think that I was getting anything extra, and so I thought my odds were crap and I was getting upset with Barbara, and it's not her fault. You gotta tear me apart, Lisa! Now I think it goes without saying that at Adventure Rank 45, the game gets significantly harder, and if you don't level your team appropriately, you're gonna have a difficult time when the world level increases. The reason I made this guide is to make your experience with the game easier so that you don't have to spend as much time fighting things or using your resin to get certain drops and hopefully get something out of it. I do also want to note there are five star characters that do also have traits that can help with this process. I believe Mona has one. I will call that out, but she's not a free to play unit and she's not very achievable other than through random chance in the standard banner. There probably are others. I didn't mention them here because I haven't used them yet, but if you know of somebody that you think is worth mentioning, let me know in the comments below. Let everybody know because I think it's important and I want to make sure that this helps everybody be able to get more out of these materials. So thanks for watching everybody. I will see you in the next one and have fun.